say, can you see by the dawn's early light what so proudly we hailed at the twilight's last gleaming whose broad stripes and bright stars through the perilous fights or the ramparts we watched were so gallantly streaming and the rocket's red glare the bombs bursting in air gave proof through the night that our flag was still there oh say does that star-spangled banner yet wave o'er the land of the free and the home of the brave Good afternoon. I invite you to pray with me today. Almighty God, as we gather this afternoon to celebrate with the Borchardings and with the Army, we pause to give you thanks for this opportunity of Brigadier General Borchardings' promotion to Major General. We thank you, Lord, for your faithfulness to us in all of the changing experiences of life. Your Holy Word encourages us in this. Because of the Lord's great love, we are not consumed. For his compassions never fail. They are new every morning. Great is your faithfulness. In your faithfulness, you place leaders in positions at strategic times for strategic purposes. And we believe that you have specially selected Rob Borchering at this time. And we thank you for him, his loving family, and their service to our nation. Your hand of blessing and providence has been upon Rob throughout his career. Thank you for guiding him and keeping him in your care, for giving him wisdom and granting him favor. He is a man of deep character and unsurpassed competence. We thank you for him. And as we witness this promotion today, we pray that you would continue to grant to Rob your wisdom, insight, courage, and influence as he serves in new positions of responsibility. Lord, we also thank you very much for Anne who has faithfully served alongside of Rob these last 31 years. For his daughters, Katie, Ellie, and Meredith, your hand has been upon them, and we thank you for their sacrifices they've made for our nation as well. Give the entire family and those who came this morning, this afternoon, grace as we witness this next chapter of service. Bless the ceremony with your presence, and may we all join with the Borchardings in their joy on this occasion. I pray these things in Jesus' name. Amen. Thank you. Please be seated. The presiding official for today's ceremony is General Charles Q. Brown, Jr. General Brown is the chairman of the Joint Chiefs of Staff. As chairman, he serves as the nation's highest ranking military officer and the principal military advisor to the President, Secretary of Defense, and the National Security Council. Ladies and gentlemen, General Brown. Well, good afternoon. It, it is a, uh, it's a real honor and pleasure to uh, be able to promote uh, Rob this afternoon. So uh, welcome to you all, and, and thanks uh, to uh, all those who are in attendance, but really also thanks to uh, all of those who actually helped put this ceremony together, uh, because a ceremony like this doesn't happen by itself. And so uh, we appreciate those, all those that work behind the scenes, uh, from the uh, blessing by uh, the, uh, the chaplain, but also by the... Uh, the National Anthem by, uh, by Chief Parker. Uh, for those that have been around me uh, when I have these events and uh, look at the size of the crowd that we have here, which is pretty impressive. 
um, is, uh, I like to say that uh, success takes help failure you can do alone. I can always tell by how much help somebody needs by the size of the crowd. Or they're, they're happy to see you do something different, um, one, of the, one of the two. Um, but you know, a lot of that success uh, uh, comes from family, and, and that's where I always want to start. And uh, you know, Shereen and I had a chance to sit down with uh, not all of the, the family members that are here, but the, the key family members. And so, uh, Anne, uh, thank you so much for your support to, to Rob. They've been married for, uh, for 31 years. Um, and, uh, they met through a mutual friend when Rob was at the, uh, up at West Point um, but, uh, and got married nine months later. So you, you did not waste any time. Um, but uh, she's been a real staunch supporter of military families and really appreciate uh, what you do to support Rob and support our military families. And then we had a chance to talk to his three daughters, um, Katie, Ellie, and Meredith. And uh, you know, as we're talking, uh, Shereen asked, I always ask, is there any good stories? That's why I have family in there. It's, it's not so much to meet the family, so I can get good stories for, as part of the presentation. And, and uh, Shereen asked, you know, is there anything you want to tell us about your father? And I mean, they all had glowing comments, uh, uh, how impressive he was and how uh, he has such a serious job. But when he comes home, he's, uh, you know, he's just a, a great dad and has a sense of humor. Um, his mom mentioned his great sense of humor. And they asked me, do I get a chance to see that? I go, no, not, not really. <laughs> you know, because everything we talk about is pretty serious um, when uh, we're going through stuff. But, uh, you know, it was really nice to hear what uh, his daughters had to say about him. And uh, we appreciate the, the three of you being here. Um, and then talk to his parents, uh, Jan and uh, Gary. Um, uh, you know, Jan's, the, uh, uh, they're both retired, but uh, I think they, you know, open up their home as Rob is at West Point to bring in uh, some of the cadets and, uh, his father, Gary, um, his pastor, then uh, did work as a financial advisor and then uh, either quit that or retired from it and then went back to being a pastor again. Um, but uh, just, uh, I know, probably put uh, a, a family of faith and we appreciate uh, your leadership. Um, you know, one of the things I asked, you know, you know, Rob is a lawyer and I, you know, I, I did ask, could I get any good stories? His mom said she knew since he was five years old he was going to be a lawyer. Because you always argue, you can always find a loophole. <laughs> and he's still doing that today, I understand. Um, and so we also have his mother-in-law, uh, Lorraine, who is here from, uh, coming up from, uh, from Newport News. And, and that's where the people I got to meet. And so I know there's more family members, and I'm going to run through some names here. Uh, Sister Meredy is here. Uh, you saw her husband uh, just gave the invocation, uh, Dave. Um, there, there's uh, Rob's niece, Savannah. Uh, his sister, Heather, is here. Where's Heather? Can you? Okay. You'd raise your hand so people will recognize you when I go through here because I, I got a whole list here. Uh, Brother in law, Harvey, is here as well. Um, their nephew is a second class cadet at uh, Yusafa down there at the end. Um, David and then uh, nephews, Robert and Ryan Murphy, are both here coming in from California. Uh, his sister-in-law, uh, Lisa, who lives here in uh, Falls Church. And, and then her uh, brother-in-law, uh, uh, Ramey, is also here. And then nephew, uh, Zach, and niece, uh, Anna. And then also uh, attending is uh, nephew, Seth, who came in from, uh, from Knoxville. I think I got everybody. So pretty big group there. They took up the whole second row. So I appreciate you, you all being here. Now, um, you know, Rob is from uh, Southern California, from uh, uh, Fullerton, uh, Chino Hills. And, um, you know, I always wonder why people join. And uh, as we had a chance to talk to uh, Rob a little bit, but also talk to his parents, um, he had a high school counselor that told him that uh, based on his aptitude scores of uh, whatever aptitude test he took, um, you know, politician, uh, military lawyer, I think it's the way it laid out, and he decided he didn't want to be a politician, but his degree is in, is in political science. Um, but um, the only school he applied to was the United States Military Academy, which surprised his kids. They go, you had no safety school? <laughs> um, but uh, in his dead setting, for those of us who are old enough to remember the, uh, the Barron's Book of Colleges, 
Um, uh, his dad mentioned that they, he, he opened the page, looked at U.S. Military Academy, went through the list, closed the book. And uh, his daughter said, God, you're lucky you got in. Uh, but in any case, uh, you know, he went to West Point, uh, was branched as a, originally branched as an engineer. And then uh, Rob, actually, I think my sense is you're a meticulous planner. Uh, because uh, when he graduated, Second Lieutenant Borshening told him he had some plans that were not going to be interrupted before he reported to active duty. And so he uh, indicated that he was not going to curtail his leave um, to ensure that he had a chance to go to a friend's wedding, travel across country with some of the other graduates, head down to Mexico, um, to a condo in uh, Cabo San Lucas, and then, uh, then spent a little time with his family and his girlfriend in Washington, D.C. before he actually came on active duty. That, that's pretty impressive, that the fact you're able to tell the Army just pound sand because I'm going to do what I want to do first before I show up. <laughs> but, uh, you know, he, he went off to uh, first over to uh, Fort Bragg, now Fort Liberty, as a platoon leader working uh, um, as a logistics officer and engineer battalion and uh, had a chance to lead uh, um, you know, 28 uh, uh, t uh, member team and uh, you know, manage a, a pretty impressive budget. But he only did that for one, one assignment, and that's when he uh, made the shift and decided he wanted to become a lawyer. Or maybe he already knew he wanted to become a lawyer, um, but uh, he moved on and, and then went to uh, University of Virginia to get his uh, uh, law degree. And uh, as part of that, he had an opportunity to do uh, two summers where he um, you can go to school during the school year, and in the summers, uh, do more of an internship. And so he did the first one at, at Fort Belvoir, and then the uh, second time he went to uh, Fort Lee, which is now Fort Greg Adams. And then uh, he had a chance to go to Germany. And uh, there he was a chief legal assistant there and uh, uh, oversaw 25 uh, uh, reserve judge advocates and work uh, you know, consumer law, taxes, and the like to start to build his experience. Uh, deployed to Kosovo where he was the assistant legal advisor, uh, working for the K-4 staff, doing international and peace support, and then came back to Kaiser Sautern, where he was a chief of military justice in managing the administration of the, uh, the largest, most widely dispersed court martial jurisdiction. So um, hopefully you never got in trouble. I got a chance to meet with Rob, getting in court martial, uh, but also was a trial counsel. So he got to use the skills that his mom talked about to be able to debate, argue, and also find loopholes uh, for those he was uh, putting on, uh, on trial, making sure they weren't taking advantage of the loopholes. And then a senior trial counsel and then an administrative law attorney. Then he went back to Charlottesville um, and uh, got a master of laws. Now, I, I, you know, it's interesting when I do these, I actually go through the entire records. And there's things I learned. I did not know you can get a master degree as a lawyer in law. Now I know. <laughs> and so uh, he did that in... Uh, I guess he was doing so good in school that he was able to leave course uh, one week early so he could deploy uh, with his unit from, uh, with the 10th uh, Special Forces Group to go to Iraq. And he's had three, did three deployments to Iraq and, uh, and worked um, a lot of the uh, special operations uh, pieces working with, and I think this maybe has been your first joint experience working with a number of uh, uh, lawyers from a number of different services. Um, I think the one thing that was highlighted was, uh, you know, as I looked through his records, there was a quote in here that I thought uh, was interesting. There was probably, you know, there, there's probably some copyright uh, and trademark pieces associated with this, where his uh, commander said, "Rob is my American Express card. I won't leave home without him." <laughs> um, and so after that assignment at uh, Fort Carson, Colorado, and his appointments, uh, he went to uh, Fort Leavenworth, where he was a student at uh, uh, Army's Command and Staff College. Then he went back to uh, Charlottesville, where he's the deputy director of the uh, Drug Advocate General's uh, Legal uh, School and uh, worked there uh, teaching. Fort Raleigh, Kansas, where he ended up uh, being a deputy stud advocate for the 1st Infantry Division, um, and then went to Stuttgart, where he was uh, uh, the uh, deputy chief of operational law at US AFRICOM, uh, where he worked there. And then Carlisle for uh, Army War College, back to Fort uh, Liberty as a stud advocate for JSOC, getting back into special operations, and then back to Colorado, to Fort Carson, um, where he deployed to Afghanistan uh, and was a legal advisor to the commander. And uh, one of those commanders was Major General Randy George, who is now Chief of Staff of the Army, who said, and I wonder if he still believes this, um, best judge advocate I have served with in 30 years, exceptional leader, future TJAG of the Army, multi-star potential in the JAG Corps. 
He's going to be the deputy T-Jack, so the T-Jack, <laughs> he's gunning for you. <laughs> he, uh, <laughs> you, you just got in a job, you're safe for at least a little while. <laughs> um, he went down to Fort Belvoir, where, where he's the executive officer for the uh, uh, Army's legal services, um, and did that, and then went to Iraq, where he was the uh, judge advocate for Operation, uh, the, the Combined Joint Task Force for Operation Inherent Resolve. And then he came to Washington, D.C., where he's a legal counsel for the chairman. And, uh, you know, he's done this for three years, two years under uh, my predecessor, General Milley, and we've been together for the past uh, 10 and a half months. And, uh, you know, the, the job of providing legal advice to uh, uh, the chairman of the Joint Chiefs, but not just to the chairman of the Joint Chiefs, but really, you know, for the Joint Staff, and you think about the role that I have providing advice to the secretary of defense into the President of the United States. Um, we're talking some weighty issues, and, and that's why we don't laugh very much when we're, we're engaging. Um, but it's the aspect of what he's able to do um, to help support me in the roles that I have. And uh, you know, I really, Rob, I really do value your counsel. And uh, it's, it's helpful to me, and not just from you, but also your entire team that I've had a chance to, to work with. Um, now, what I also do is I go, through, as I mentioned, I go through their record. and. Uh, always try to go back to their first performance report to see if somebody said something that would kind of foreshadow why we're here today. And so in, in Rob's first uh, performance report, it said, uh, and I quote, outstanding performance of duty by an exceptional young platoon leader. Second Lieutenant uh, Borshading is clearly ahead of his peers in maturity, judgment, and development. He is a very positive leader. He has a very positive leadership style and his troops respond with outstanding performance He's clearly ready for increased responsibilities now. And so that ought to tell you something, that uh, you know, somebody saw something in, in Rob very early in his career. Um, now, the other thing I also do is I also ask, uh, is there some interesting fact that most of us would not know about Rob that you could use at a cocktail party? And so Rob, you know, they've spent a little time in Colorado. Uh, and if you've been to Colorado, there's a number of uh, peaks that are over 14,000 feet. Rob has climbed 25 of them. And he has 33 left to go. <laughs> um, he loves national parks. He's been to uh, 25 to 30 of them. Um, big sports fan, anything from West Point or UVA. Um, and he also led the negotiations with the Taliban, um, you know, the first set of t uh, negotiations back in 2019. And yeah, you be the judge how well that worked out. <laughs> It's interesting, uh, you know, one of his favorite quotes is, uh, is the Teddy Roosevelt man in the arena. And it just so happens in my office yesterday, we were having a conversation, and one of the members of my staff goes, we're talking about quotes. He goes, oh, don't use that quote. And I go, well, you, you don't know that I'm having a ceremony tomorrow where that's his favorite quote. And so, uh, but it really talks about uh, doing hard things. And, and that's what Rob's been able to do. And, um, you know, I just find it interesting to have a chance to uh, cross paths you know, and only having known you for the past 10 and a half months, I, I really have appreciated uh, getting to know uh, you and spending time with your family today. I have one more fun fact. And, uh, you know, when Rob was making a transition from being an Army engineer to decide to become a, an Army JAG, you know, he had to fill his application. And on that application, um, when he's putting it all together, his commander wrote on the application, and I quote, a talent officer, but one who is not committed to the Army, past the obligation incurred by legal education. <laughs> that person was wrong. <laughs> and one of the things that uh, uh, Rob highlighted in, in the questionnaire to help me prepare for this is, uh, I think we all have a calling. You know, uh, for those of us that uh, wear the uniform to raise our right hand to take an oath to support and defend the Constitution, um, or if you have a calling to do anything else, like in the ministry, as his, as his father did. But uh, one of the things he highlighted is the calling that he and Ann had uh, to continue to serve uh, where they're needed and to be able to help, uh, you know, not only support our nation, but support our military families. And uh, we just appreciate both of you for, uh, you know, sticking with that calling. And as uh, Rob said, he's going to continue to do this until the Army gives him a lateral move. It's not. He's going to be moving up. He'll leave uh, uh, the joint staff. We're going to be sad to see you both go. Um, but uh, he's, he won't be far. He'll still be here in the building, so we'll get a chance to uh, see you periodically uh, going to be the uh, 
the Deputy uh, Judge Aggravate for the United States Army. Rob, congratulations. It's, uh, again, a distinct honor to have uh, had a chance to work with you, and I want to wish you and your family all the best. And uh, without further ado, let's get you promoted. At this time, General Brown will provide General Borchening his award presentation prior to his promotion. Attention to orders. This is to certify that the Secretary of Defense has awarded the Defense Superior Service Medal to Major General Robert A. Borchening, United States Army. Major General Robert A. Borchening distinguished himself by superior meritorious service in a position of significant responsibility as legal counsel to the Chairman of the Joint Chiefs of Staff from August 2021 to August 2024. Major General Borchening directly co contributed to the national security of the United States, providing sage counsel and legal advice across the legal spectrum, and contributed immeasurably to the Chairman's ability to advise the President, Secretary of Defense, and National Security Council. Major General Borchening's superb leadership, pragmatic solutions to difficult strategic problems, and relentless dedication to duty embodied the departmental standard for legal advisors and their value to mission accomplishment. His tremendous efforts and cogent legal advice were instrumental in charting paths through difficult and ambiguous international legal challenges, including strategic uses of force across the globe and historic events involving Syria, Russia, Iran, Iraq, Israel, Gaza, Yemen, and Afghanistan. The distinctive accomplishments of Major General Borchardt reflect great credit upon himself the United States Army, and the Office of the Chairman of the Joint Chiefs of Staff. General Net Brown will now direct the promotion of Brigadier General Borchardt to Major General. Sure. Attention to orders. The President of the United States has reposed special trust and confidence in the patriotism, valor, fidelity, and abilities of Robert A. Borchardt. In view of these qualities and his demonstrated potential for increased responsibility, he is therefore promoted to the rank of Major General United States Army. By order of the Secretary of the Army, Christine E. Wormuth. At this time, we invite Major General Borchardt's family to come up and pin on his new rank. Ladies and gentlemen, if you are able, please stand as General Brown will now administer the oath of office to Major General Robert Borcherding. I, Robert Allen Borcherding, 
and then appointed the engineer of the United States Army. Have you been appointed a major general in the United States Army? You solemnly swear. You solemnly swear to support and defend the Constitution of the United States. To support and defend the Constitution of the United States against all enemies foreign and domestic. Against all enemies foreign and domestic. And bear true faith and allegiance to the same. And bear true faith and allegiance to the same. I take this obligation freely. I take this obligation freely without any mental reservation. Without any mental reservation or perspective. For purpose of evasion, and will well and faithfully, and will well and faithfully discharge the duties, discharge the duties of the office upon which I am about to enter, of the office upon which I am about to enter. So help me God. So help me God. Congratulations. Thank you, General Brown. Ladies and gentlemen, please be seated. At this time, Major General Borcherding will have his two-star flag posted by his nephew, Cadet David Ignacio from the United States Air Force Academy, and his close family friend, Second Lieutenant Charlie Reeves from the United States Army. The or original flags authorized for general officers were boat flags, scarlet in color. They were first, au first authorized in war, dated 22 August 1903 for the use of officers of the Army when making official visits to the Navy vessels. The same provision for boat flags were officially proclaimed for the Army of the United States in 1904. In 1947, the Deputy Chief of Staff for Personnel authorized all general officer flags, except Medical Corps and Chaplain flags, to be scarlet with white stars and gold fringe. Ladies and gentlemen, Major General Borshing would like to recognize the significant impact his family has had on his career. As such, bouquets of flowers will be presented to his wife, Anne, his mother Janice, and his mother-in-law Lorraine. Ladies and gentlemen, <laughs> ladies and gentlemen, Major General Robert Borcherding. Well, this is going to take a moment. Uh, there are a lot of people I have to thank. And at first, I'd like to recognize uh, some of our, our dignitaries whom I've had the pleasure to serve with. And, um, and then I'll have a lot more people to thank after that, too. So uh, General Brown, thank you, sir, for the, those very kind words. And, uh, and Ryan, thank you for serving as a narrator. I did mention to General Brown after the oath that I, I still haven't found a loophole in the oath. So I think, I think we're good there. Uh, not that I tried very hard. Uh, so General Mrs. Brown, uh, Lieutenant General Mrs. Berger, uh, General Petey, Admiral Whitworth, General Sims, Hale, Henry, Grinkovich, Kaczynski, McGee, Isaacson, uh, General Mrs. Thomas, General Ryan, Eisenhower, Bly, Downs, Rieger, Admiral French, Admiral Donovan, Admiral Himes, Generals Mendelson, Thompson, Arizaga, Wells, Ranieri, Erisman, Albrecht, and uh, General Retired Escalier. Also many SES friends here today, uh, Ms. Curley, Ms. Gahan, Ms. Council Ross, Mr. Young, Golden, Schmouter, Letterer, Williamson, Osprung, uh, Ms. Osprung, uh, Ms. St. Peter, Ms. Minns, uh, Mr. Pregent, Hover, Thrasher, and Johnson. That's it. <laughs> family and friends, uh, thank you all for joining us this afternoon. Uh, you honor our family with your presence, and I truly mean that. General Brown, I thank you again for presiding today and for your leadership. You provide steady and inspiring leadership to the Joint Force as you serve as a principal military advisor to the President, Secretary of Defense, and the National Security Council. Leadership absolutely matters, and yours is incredibly impactful. 
I know that I'm not alone in saying that you personally inspire me. Thank you. This ceremony would not be possible without the selfless contributions of so many, and much of it I'm sure I'm not even aware of. Uh, Colonel Corey Mack, my principal deputy and primary action officer, uh, as well as my new XO, Lieutenant Colonel Katie Spencer, uh, Jen Tika, and the entire uh, protocol team from the chairman's office, especially Gunny Sergeant uh, Maeta. All of the volunteers who served as ushers and escorts, I'm gonna assume you're volunteers, I won't, uh, I won't <laughs> look behind the curtain on that one. Uh, Ryan, uh, my brother-in-law, Dave Bolas, for the invocation, and I'll, I'll, uh, I'll give you the benefit of the doubt on the benediction, but we'll see. Uh, Chief Q Parker, who um, I first heard sing the national anthem last month. Uh, you knocked my socks off when I heard that, uh, so I'm not wearing any today, just to be sure. <laughs> Actually, you saw that I probably was. Um, very powerful vocal performance of our national anthem, very powerful. And behind the scenes of it all, my wife, Anne. Uh, please join me in giving all of these folks who have contributed so much a round of applause. <laughs> Although today's ceremony formally commemorates uh, my promotion to Major General, I view it primarily as an opportunity to express my gratitude to so many who have helped make our continued service possible. Uh, consistent with my priorities, I first express my deepest gratitude to my Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, through whom all things are possible, including his unfinished work in me. And consistent with our faith, Anne and I have long believed that our vocational calling is to serve in the military community. That does not make the service any easier, but it does put the sacrifices and trials into perspective. As Anne summarized so well, we're all in until the very end, whenever that may be. And as General Brown noted, I have a lot of family here today. Uh, as much as we're able, we, we show up for each other. So much so that uh, we have the surprise guest this morning and that uh, my nephew, uh, Andrew Bolas, also showed up. Uh, and I'll, I'll mention you in context in a little bit here. Um, first, I want to thank and honor my parents. Uh, my father, Gary, as General Brown noted, was a pastor, and he taught me much about servant leadership. He helped plant the seeds in my heart of loving my neighbor as myself, uh, a radical yet fundamental leadership principle. You didn't serve in uniform, Dad, but you did teach me about leadership, primarily through the power of your example. And mom, you like to say that I didn't get my stubbornness from you because you've still got yours. <laughs> I, those don't both have to be true. Uh, you do still have yours, uh, and I think that's where I got it. I credit you with passing on perseverance and grit that I've absolutely needed on this journey. Uh, to both of you, besides your obvious role in bringing me into this world, my character is largely a reflection of your training and example. And you're also responsible for me being a character. Uh, dad, as far as I'm concerned, you invented the dad joke. And mom, you mastered the art of practical jokes. And these are part of my DNA too. Uh, for those I haven't had the privilege to work with before, uh, now you know, it's bad. <laughs> but probably not as bad as you're imagining. I, I spared you that part, sir. Yeah. Uh, and Lorraine, mother of my wife, I could not be more grateful to you and Paul for assenting to my nervous request for your daughter's hand. And from then until now, you've been all in. Loving on and investing in our family, you raised a true Proverbs 31 woman whose husband and daughters call blessed. And we honor you as the Petty John matriarch, as do so many. I wish Paul was still with us today. And love of my life, if I can get past this part, I'll be good. Uh, <laughs> in all endeavors, from parenting to military service, that you've put up with me for over 31 years is a true testament to your patience and perseverance. I remember coming home from one of the early deployments with the 10th group, uh, committed to following the chaplain's redeployment guidance. Uh, he said, your family's been doing great without you, uh, so don't come home and start taking over. On the second day, you asked me, um, Hey, when are you going to start helping out around here? 
Not my last mistake in our relationship. I could not be more grateful for you and your steadfast love and support. There's no one else I'd rather do life with. Uh, Katie, Ellie, and Meredith, um, you didn't get to pick your parents. Not that you choose differently or vote on their calling, but these facts have had a profound and formative impact on your lives. It's been wonderful to have you all home under our roof this summer. I treasure our times together and do not look forward to an empty nest. I love you all the way to the moon and back. I have a gift for each of you under your chairs. Open them after the ceremony, please. <laughs> Hopefully, they'll help ease the pain of the very recent departure of our beloved trampoline, for which I have yet to be forgiven. Okay, sisters. I, uh, I have two, Anne has one. And they are, we're all interwoven in the, the military community. So my sisters, uh, Meredy and Heather, Meredy married my, my roommate from West Point, my brother-in-law, Dave, and they have their oldest son, or their only son, Andrew, is a, a 21 West Point grad and now an engineer officer out serving out in Hawaii and surprised us with his, uh, his arrival today, and we're very grateful for, for him. And he has a sister, Savannah, who's also here with us today, drove up from, from Charlotte. Uh, my, si my sister, Heather, is married to Dave's seminary classmate, Harvey, yeah, we, yes, that, that's, a, that's how it tends to work, and it will uh, it'll repeat itself again here. Uh, and they have uh, their youngest son, David, is a, a cadet at the Air Force Academy. You're welcome, sir. And, uh, and two other sons, Ryan and Robert. And then uh, Lisa is Anne's sister, and she married uh, a very close friend of mine, Ramey, that was one year behind me at West Point. And... Um, he went field artillery and then uh, went to UCUS and became a, a doctor and recently re or retired about two years ago now. And their oldest son, uh, Tyler, just graduated this, this May from, from West Point and is at uh, field artillery OBC out at Fort Sale right now. Uh, so he could not be with us. And then Seth, Zach, and Anna Claire. It's deeply meaning meaningful to share common service in the profession of arms with so many family members. But to be clear, I love all of my family equally, no matter the path of their calling. Many other family members and friends were unable to make it and are hopefully watching the live stream. My dad gave me quite a good rundown of all the folks back in Southern California that apparently are. So shout out to you. Uh, within the Army and joint communities, I have more people to thank than time permits. But I'll mention some truly impactful people from a few categories that will illustrate the rich mentorship that I've enjoyed. Uh, commanders under whom I've served are General, Generals Mike Repass, Ken Tovo, Sean Swindell, Dana Chipman, Vince Brooks, Tony Thomas, Scotty Miller, Randy George, Susan Escalier, and Paul Calvert. To that, I'll add two officers who bore the most responsibility, yet without the benefit of the authorities of command, and those are Generals Mark Milley and C.Q. Brown. Senior leaders in the Army JAG Corps, past and present, General Scott Black, Dana Chipman, Butch Tate, Tom Ayers, Chuck Petey, Stu Risch, Joe Berger, Susan Escalier, and Pat Houston, plus my JAG Corps peers these past three years, George Smalley, Ali Martin, Dave Mendelson, Warren Wells, and J.J. Thompson. SJs and general counsel that I've served under, Mark Romaneski, Joe Frisk, Sharon Riley, Jake Jacobson, Mike Smith, Carl Getsky, Jim Dapper, Norm Allen, Tom Leary, and Caroline Crass. Teammates with whom I've worked directly who are present in the order they appeared in the movie of my life. Not that anybody's going to make a movie about my life. Um, officers, NCOs, and civilians across the joint force. Uh, Sergeant Major Ranger Brody. I'm pretty sure that is not your legal first name, but it might as well be. Uh, Terry Arisman, Eric Young, Gary Walinda, Sam Manicum, Rob Stone, Ed Bowen, Jake Wolf, uh, Corey Mack, Drew Kernan, Chris Monty, uh, Admiral Whitworth. General Hale, Admiral Himes, General Albrecht, General Ryan, Josh Berry, Wayne Williams, Juan Santiago, Adam Miller, Tanya Martin, Becky Osprung, and Liz Boggs. Longtime friends beyond those already mentioned uh, that are here with us are Rich and Margaret Demiglio, Steve and Molly Aiden, Paul and Sarah Golden, Pat and Amy Flom, Case and Erica Thomas, Kristen Goodrich, 
Ed and Jen Cook, Ed and Dinah Thomas, Josh and Kemi Weinstein, Josh and Laura Berry, Mike and Kelly Wagner, and Dave Drake. And then my Joyce staff mentors. Admiral Grady, our vice chairman, the directors under whom I've served, Generals Pappas, Mingus, and Sims, um, the vice directors, the Admiral Wyckoff and General Downs, and their front offices. Uh, huge shout out to the Chairman's XOs, Brandon Techmeyer, Tom Donovan, Eric Johnson, and now Steve Aldridge, along with the directors of the Joint Staff Directorates uh, that are here, uh, General Henry, General Grinkovich, General Kaczynski, uh, General McGee, General Isaacson, Admiral Spadaro, and my special staff partners in the Surgeon's Office, Public Affairs, Le uh, Ledge Affairs, and Chairman's Action Group. Like I said, I could go on, and many more are here today, including those with whom I've served in Chairman's Legal, who represent the absolute best of the services in terms of both talent and commitment. If you served with me in Chairman's Legal, please raise your hand. These are your best lawyers in the, in the military. 10 USC 155 says that they have to be. Those are who the services send to work on the joint staff. And I thank you all from the bottom of my heart for applying your talent and your commitment, being great teammates, unflappable teammates for these past three years. And I cannot forget my colleagues in DOD, Office of General Counsel and the National Security Council, several, several of whom are present. You all made staying in fun and rewarding and helped shape me into who I am today. I open by highlighting the dominant role of faith in our lives. We've worshiped and shared life together over the years with some here today. From our earliest days in Charlottesville, Virginia during law school, Brian and Carolyn Litvin and Steve and Molly Aiden, and from our current church family at McLean Presbyterian Church, Diego and Nancy Ruiz, Jim and Deb Perry, Steve and Laura Welke, Sean and Kathy Clark, and Jonathan and Allison Whittle. We also have many other wonderful local friends here with us today. Your investment in our lives is of eternal value. That's enough recognition, although there are many more that I could mention. I've, I've focused on gratitude so far, and I'll close with some leadership reflections. I'm embarrassed to admit that it took me about 12 years uh, in the Army before I became comfortable in my own skin. And by that I mean I thought of myself less and others first. To those that I served with in those first two, 12 years, if you're listening, I'm sorry. <laughs> and I should probably apologize to the rest of you also, because I probably have plenty of remnants of that um, in me still. I increasingly realized that my responsibility is to empower those, uh, others who do their job, to do their jobs well, and highlight their accomplishments as they shine. And that's what I intend to continue to do. Members of the Army JAG Corps, I know that you were inspired like I am to serve under the leadership of Lieutenant General Joe Berger as our TJAG. Consistent with our four constants, principal counsel, mastery of the law, servant leadership and stewardship, we can build upon the amazing accomplishments of our predecessors and further elevate this most consequential practice of law. I see you, believe in you, and have incredibly high expectations of you as I'm confident you also have of yourselves. As members of dual professions that of the arms and the law, we can live out our oaths together to support and defend the Constitution of the United States against all enemies. This will defend. The duties and responsibilities I assume are incredibly important, and yet I am not. It is not about me, but about the people of the Army JAG Corps whom I serve alongside General Berger and the JAG Corps leadership team. I will strive every day to be worthy of your trust and confidence. May God bless you all. Do justice, love kindness, and walk humbly. Over to you, Dave, for the benediction, and I thank you all. Ladies and gentlemen, please stand if you're able for the benediction by Chaplain Bolas and remain standing for the singing of the Army song. 
I invite you to pray with me. Lord, we thank you for this opportunity to witness the ceremony today. For the comments, the tributes, and this occasion to celebrate, we are grateful for what you're doing in Rob's life, the Borchardings' lives, and in our army. Lord, we ask that you just continue to grant Major General Borcharding an abundance of your wisdom, patience, and strength as he serves. Lord, I also pray too, just give him grace that he might receive some of these compliments, the things that were said and the things that will be said about him today as a humble servant. Strengthen us all to live and serve above the common level of life as we follow you and as we serve our purposes in the paths you've ordained for each one of us. Now, may the Lord bless you and keep you. May his face shine upon you and may he turn his countenance upon you and give you peace. I pray these things, Lord, in your holy and precious name. Amen. Ladies and gentlemen, this concludes today's ceremony. All guests are invited to congratulate Major General Borchening and his family in the receiving line and enjoy refreshments in the hallway outside the auditorium. Thank you and have a pleasant afternoon.